Anyway, uh, we are here with game two. I need to change something first. So, again, we are here with game two between Evo, Dota 2, and Z Home. Z Home will be on the raiding side for this game, and Evo on the dire side. First game was taken uh, convincingly by Evo. There was no answer to their pushing strategy from Z Home, and they just had to stand by and watch their towers crumble before their eyes. And uh, we will see if uh, if they can offend them this time because they want that point too. Because it is a Gozu League, it is Gozu League Division Two. It's going to be a point system. Each win that a team gets, they get a point for it. As if at the end of the season, team with the most points wins. That's how it goes. And uh, yeah, two teams, two games between each team. So this is game two. So this is their last chance to get that point up versus versus the opponent team. And we're going to see if they're going to be able to do that. Uh, we have got, uh, yeah, like I said, Z-Home on the radiant side, Evo on the dire side. So the first pick will go towards Z-Home. And the first ban, therefore, as well. We have got some bans. We've got a Lushrak ban. And as well as the Furion. So they're banning out pushing heroes. Understandable as well. Because they do not want to get pushed like they did last game. And Lushrak basically made everything possible there. As we see a Darkseer as well as a Lycan band out from EVO right now. Uh, we still have the Chen in. Chen was in Zeom's hand previously and uh, was not able, uh, well, was not able to push back as hard as uh, EVO was pushing in. So let's see if they're going to ban it out this time or if they're going to leave it in. I mean, we still have the Brute Mother was, was banned out last game as well as the... Well, no, I'm not sure. Invoker, I believe, that was banned out last game. So let's see. They're going into reserve time for this last ban. I mean, it, yeah, banning out the Windrunner. They had picked up the Windrunner as the first pick in the previous game. And I have to say, they landed some great shackles. They, they really did. It was great shackles all around. Uh, but they did not have the damage yet to follow it up. They had, had the Templar Assassin in that game. Uh, but she didn't get enough farm to be able to uh, to do anything just yet. Same goes for Marana. Marana actually got shut down hard, a lot harder than the Templar Assassin did. But uh, yeah, they they could they just did not have the damage to to uh, to deal with that yet. So let's see which team is going to change their strategy around most. We have got a lone druid ban out from Evo, so that's a solo lane and a pusher hero being ban out, and it's kind of forcing to still uh, have Chaos Knight as well as Chen in the in the in the pickups. As I just realized that uh, Chaos Knight was banned out last game, and I don't think the Invoker was picked nor banned, but I just had to point out that he is then still in the pool. Oh well, uh, Chaos Knight picked up here by uh, by Z Home. They can make any combination with that. There's a lot of heroes that are strong with that. Lena, Age Depuration. Crystal main, every 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 stun hero basically, because just with those follow up stuns, that's uh yeah, and you can even get like I said the uh, Lena with the slow stun, as in with a lot a lot of cast time on that stun, and uh, that that's just possible with that because you have got that four second stun that you perfectly can time your stun around. And you have a guaranteed hit on your son. Reserve time going in for Evo. Let's see what they are going to pick up as a first pick. Do they want to get the Chen? Are they going to go for pushing once again? Or do they want to have some combination as well? As that's, that's the advantage that you have. If you're picking two heroes, you can pick up one combination off the bat. You don't have to uh, You don't have to hope like like Zeo. Well, they can't get any combination still. Templar so, reserve. oh... I was going to say, you can just get something like a Sand King and a Brewmaster, for example. Just not that, or sorry, I was going to say Sand Queen and a Shrek, if the Shrek would have been so in. Or a Shadow Demon and a Brewmaster, just those combinations they could have done. they rather go for a Sand King as well as a Templar Assassin. So let's see how this Templar Assassin is going to be doing. Uh, she's probably going to be a solo lane uh, with Sand King... Uh, on a, on a different lane, probably going to be a dual lane. Let's see which going to be, uh, which one is going to be for them, uh, which one, which lane he's going to be at. Maybe with a Lena, could still be. It's also, I mean, if you can't get a track, Lena stun is like the second best, I guess. But uh, we will see. As they did very good with their Sand King, even though they did not have that many. They did not have that many uh, bur blink burst like epicenters. Though he had that blink, so. I don't think he ever did it once, even. Hmm. Oh well. He did do uh, he did do his epicenters, of course, but then just not with that combination. But then again, there wasn't any major team fight because Z Home made sure that they didn't have those, even though they were still uh, not winning it from that one. 
Uh, we have got a uh, Venomancer being picked up for Evo as well, so looking probably towards a tri lane with a Venomancer and a S Sand King, even though they had the Venomancer in the previous game as a solo laner. And picking up that Venomancer also just to be able to have that support, have that slow. You can combine it with the slow from the Templar Assassin stuns, and that's just going to be a very powerful lane. And an age separation band uh, from Evo as well. Sorry, I'm sticking to Evo for a second, because, well, you know, the bands are being done. I will go over Xeom in a moment. Uh, age separation band, great ban against the. Uh, the CK because the uh, age separation together with the CK is, is a good combination. You can do nothing against that cold feet hitting as soon as you got that first stun off, as well as the crystal main. Good combination as well. So, banning out those supports for Z Home as they themselves banned out two, two solo lanes, a Beastmaster as well as a Queen of Pain. Beastmaster was in the game for Evo in the previous one, so they don't want to face that roar once again. And it's going to be a Queen of Pain that is uh, banned out as well. Just a solid solo lane for them. Uh, to uh, to not have to face uh, up against. I have to point out though, Broodmother is still in the pool and not picked up yet. Ten seconds. Even though if Zeon would pick it up, they already have a counter there in the Sand King. But for Evo, it could Five still be a great hero to have. Because that would mean that either they had to shut down the Broodmother or they had to shut down the Temporary Assassin. One of those two is going to get farmed regardless. If she's indeed not going to go for all that Genki uh, style. Uh, for Zeom as well, they picked up a Tidehunter, they picked up an Invoker. So some team fight for them. They lacked that in the previous game. So they got it now. Definitely need it as well as an Invoker. Good solid solo lane and some extra team fight. And just uh, just more counter push as well. Just in case Evo is going to go for some pushing. They have got that counter push there as well. As I'm now noticing that I'm in the meantime making gestures with my hand that you don't see. So you just see me moving around all the time. I'm just going to... There, that's better. And there we have an Enigma for Zeom, so they could go for a hero in the jungle as well. And uh, with a Tide Hunter, actually, if a Broodmother is still being picked up at Evo, they have got the Tide Hunter versus uh, versus him. And uh, yeah, Enigma is gonna either be in the jungle or a solo lane, and that's the counter towards the Enigma. And we're gonna see some black holes, but but. Uh, there is a Ruby picked up by Evo, and uh, he is being considered as a counter to Enigma right now, purely because the Black Hole is a channeled spell. You have every chance to steal it. It's a guaranteed steal if you're not in the Black Hole yourself. And you will be able to cast your Black Hole straight after. So, definitely a good and fun pickup here as well, as literally the last pickup for Z-Home. Trying to deny some farm for that Templar Assassin, most likely. As uh, we will see, uh, we will see how this is gonna go. There is, there is a lot of differences from the last uh, last game. I mean, last game there was just a lot of pushing power from Evo. Right now, they don't have that much. They're more building towards well mid game still, uh, and building around maybe the Rubik picking up all those ultimates because there's a lot of great ultimates for him to pick up here. Of course, you don't, you're not going for the ultimates only, but it's uh, they, there is a lot of spells to pick up, especially with an Invoker also on the other side. Can't really go all that wrong with a the Rubik there. And uh, still needing their last pick as well. Ruby could go solo mid as well as a Templar Assassin, but he could go solo side lane as well. And then they're looking maybe for a, tri for a tri lane with the Sand King and the, and the Venomance. And then just one hero to go. Maybe. Maybe. Because with the tri lane, you're going to normally go for a, for a hard carry, but they don't really need that. They need some early game, uh, early game presence. I wonder which one it's going to be. Or if they're going to go for jungle hero still. For some weird unorthodox hero that uh, we can't guess, that I can't guess, anyway. I do like these picks, though. This is this is like... I mean, you're, we're going to see Ravage's black holes, so there's going to be team fights. And previous game, there was only Sand King as a team fight hero, so one team was looking for team fights, but didn't get it. But this time, there is two team fight heroes on the, on the Z-Home. Uh, well, you can call, of course, Lich Track, uh, sorry, Invoker and Lich also a bit of team fight, but not as much as the Black Holes and the Ravages. And the Sand King with the Absence on the opposite side, as well as the Black Holes are being stolen. Whoa, a Disruptor! Nice! I really like this lineup. I mean, imagine! Disruptor! Keeping everybody locked together, his ultimate over it, epicenter over it, maybe a stolen Ravager black hole over it. There's just so much team fight going on right there that we are gonna see if we're gonna see it all happen at the same time. That would of course be uh, our uh, our goal uh, for the teams that might not be the case though. So uh, you know you, we might get disappointed, but we are okay because we see a disruptor in the game as well as a Rubik and a Templar assassin. Three heroes that are relatively new, especially Disruptor and Templar Assassin, of course. 
we have seen Ruby getting a lot of playtime already, and it's nice that he is um, making his way into the metagame as a counter to uh, Nygma. That means that we can see more black holes. Uh, we will, uh, I will switch over this so we can see the whole screen, the whole game. Here we go. No, Five here we go. Remaining. There we go. It works. As uh, We just have to go one second. There we go. So uh, let's see who's going to be playing what for EVO. We have got Gasha Monster playing that Disruptor uh, for Team EVO on the Dire side. Blue Core is going to be playing the Sand King. It's going to be Blah Blah Foo on the Rubik. Uh, go Audio Bubs on the Templar Assassin. And we're on the Tem Venomancer on the Dire side. As they pop up a smoke just like they did last time when they actually got a first blood with that. And they're making their way over. We see the lion making their way over to the Radiant Forest. And we will jump ourselves over to, to the Radiant Forest as well, where we see Iwar Helmet standing, uh, playing the Lich, as he might be running into an unpleasant surprise if he's actually going to go there toward. Mm. Nope. Oh, I'm just going to follow this. I'm just going to follow this before introducing the rest. Well, actually, I can introduce you to the Invoker, who might be in a slightly uh, difficult position right now. We have got Nick Namatom playing the Invoker. As uh, Well, no first blood this time for Evo so far. At least so far. Not with the smoke gank, anyway. No higher lower ground advantage that it did have last time. They came from the higher ground and managed to pick up the, uh, the Mirana that way. Uh, on the Invoker lane, we also have a Tide Hunter, so he will be uh, pulling for that lane most likely, as Invoker is going to try to get uh, a lot of farm, and they will try to deny farm to Evo, where this looks to be a tri lane with the Disruptor being the, the one to farm. Uh, Skilling his uh, Thunderstrike as the first one. Nice uh, AoE harassment. Uh, on this middle lane, we will have a uh, CK as well as a Lich combination. CK will uh, be played by the Nino. Uh, he is a stand-in as well as uh, well. Lich was. We already went over the Lich when he was uh, going there toward uh, I were home. But they they're going to be fine this middle lane. Lich will make sure that there is going to be a uh, the lane is going to be in their position the whole time, and they will do okay for us, the Templar assassin as well. Uh, they don't have that much to uh, to lock down these time lanes, though. That's going to be their downside. Not a lot of counter for that one, as last game we did have a lot of uh, counter for the Templar Assassin on the opposite lane, as in, yeah, last time the Venomanta was there, of course, to stop, them, uh, stop him from farming, as well as the, no. uh, the Lechrak, like, nice harassment. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite expensive, actually, to do that, 130 mana, so he can't do it all that much, like two times right now, and he would not be able to do it again, but uh, just forcing him back, it's nice, I guess. Tidehunter is going to stand here, get some of the experience. I don't think he has shown his phase around, and actually didn't stack because he couldn't, because there was a ward, and he doesn't have counter wards up there. In the meantime, we're going to swap... Oh, oh, hello, Sand King! <laughs> just finding him in the jungle there. And uh, that was actually the signal for Evo to back off again as well. Uh, but yeah, on the top lane we haven't gone over the Enigma yet. Enigma is on the solo lane, being played by Baser. And uh, he is up for the Rubik on the solo lane as well. And I do think both of these should be fine until level 6. And then we're going to see, of course, until maybe until there's going to be a, uh, a gank happening from uh, any of the characters that might be leaving their lanes. As I think the most interesting uh, lane to note is probably this bottom lane. I hope I'm not going to miss anything because of it, because, uh, oh, there we go, Gale, they have the initiation from the Gale, they've got the gush to stop it. But this is just a, this is just a very deadly lane to have, I mean, that could be, uh, when he gets his glimpse, if, if they want to chase it, then he could just uh, pull the hero back and make sure that they, uh, well, it's just, it's, it's just very nice. Like, X marks the spot, but without the, without the Jaws sound, because I do think it's a Jaws sound with the movie for the sharks and stuff, Jaws, Jaws, yeah. sharks, yeah, to that one. Okay, different topic. Yeah, Dota, right. And uh, yeah, he scaled his uh, kinetic field as well. And that will... I mean, that's the thing I talked about with the team fights. They... Oh, wait a second. Oh, son. Templar Assassin is going to run from this reality rip there as well. And there's a free fraction. And he shall be safe. He only has one tango left, though. And he will need more. He only has 500 gold, so not enough yet for his bottle. So we'll have to be extra careful for a long time. With uh, Lich already taking a lot of damage there as well. Uh, but yeah. That's uh, that's gonna be the case. In the meantime, bottom lane, we have got some extra as well. Sand King, uh, Sandstorm actually saved his life, but the first blood goes towards the Venomancer and the Invoker not able to get that kill. 
Gush landing on the Sand King still as Time Doctor wants to go for that kill and he will go for that kill, he will get that kill as he is locked in place by the kinetic field. Time Hunter will try to move away, is taking a lot of damage though and is probably gonna go down to the disruptor with the kill still hitting. I don't know if that was needed, but the uh yeah, Thunderstrike getting blasted or the right click there. In the meantime, Chaos Knight, there we go. Temporal Assassin still dying on this uh, middle lane. A uh, nice advantage for them to have. I mean, if you have got that dual lane, you want to make sure that the opponent is, uh, you know, not getting as much farm as you do. And right now, Temporal Assassin uh, did not get as much farm and also got killed off. So great start on the lane for for uh, Z Home right now. As Chaos Knight is a 15 for 4 with only 3 for 1 on the Templar Assassin, so really not having that great of a time. Tidehunter has rotated to the top lane in the meantime, and Rubik's got some harassment from a Malefice, but uh, no more mana left in the Enigma. And Tidehunter actually uh, backing off again, showing himself as well, so Rubik will be will know that he is there. In the meantime, we have got a gank going on, smoke up on Evo. And we've got level 2 Thunderstrike as well as the Kinetic Field. If they manage to catch, some catch someone out on that one, that would be nice for them to get, get. and there goes uh, the Lich getting harassed, Refraction going off, Kinetic Field actually not hitting and uh, Haze Rune for the Chaos Knight, so he will be safe regardless, in the meantime though, who's not safe is gonna be the Enigma who's being taken down by the Rubik, and Tyhunter who took down the Rubik afterwards, so Rubik's still getting the experience from the kill, a 2 on 1 kill might I add, so he still managed to take down one with him, uh, and got the experience for that as well. In the meantime, wow, Chaos Knight killing off the Templar Assassin. And that is quite impressive indeed. I was not expecting it as Lich was their reality rift. They want to go for more, but there's a Sandstorm. He will be safe. It was two for three, and they managed to kill off the Templar Assassin. Templar Assassin dying for the second time here. In uh, in favor of Zeo. With the stand-ins doing their job. Actually, double stand in lane. That's quite nice. In the meantime, Invoker has got some free farm on the bottom lane. It'll send me free farm. 14 for 2 for him right now. As Venomance has taken the farm on this bottom lane, it's 25 for 2. And we're gonna switch back to the mid lane because this Temporal Assassin might be in a lot of trouble again. There is still mana up on the Chaos Knight, but only for one thing, only for the Rift. Or, well, al almost Chaos Bolt, uh, 10 mana away from that. There we go, Templar Assassin hiding. Actually backing off again. Oh well. Oh well, Tide Hunter in the meantime. Standing there to check out the room for six minutes is waiting there. Gotta wait there for a long time though. And uh, might be going for this uh, Templar Assassin again. Here he comes. Here he comes. Wants to land the gush. Is not gonna be able to do it though. It's daylight still, so she saw him coming from a long way away. In the meantime, bottom lane, Invoker, Pop of Invisibility will be safe. Which might not be safe as the tower getting harassed a lot here. Uh, with the creep still to tank it up, but there will soon not be any creeps left as the Venomizer will be forced to tank the tower up a bit. And then we're gonna see if the next creep wave will allow the tower to go down. In the meantime, Invoker is still, of course, there, so he should be able to uh, to deny it if it actually gets that far. Tide Hunter, level five, almost level six, might be able to throw down a Ravage uh, after he did that. Did that, and uh, after he hit that, and then we might be seeing some kills. Level five up on the Venomance as well. Sand King is still level three though, as well as level four up on the Disruptor. Only barely level four though. And uh, Nigma getting forced out of his lane by the Rubik. Rubik who is still quite nice on uh, on health and uh, mana. He's now level seven. He's got a stolen Malefice. Uh, very annoying, as that is one of the most annoying spells for the Enigma. Of course, Black Hole is really annoying too. But if you're facing an Enigma, that Malefice is gonna be is y you're gonna hate it. You're really gonna hate it because it does a lot of harassment. You can't really stand still during it. Door strike in the meantime. There goes the kinetic field as well, he can't move away, they're locked in place, got to pop his invisibility, so should be safe, and it's gonna be Sandy popping himself into a sandstorm, Venomans are trying to get away, there will be an anchor smash, will there be more though, they might actually be able to kill off some heroes here, Venomans are on the chase, juking a bit in the forest here, but the disruptor is not able to do anything, Burr strike hitting on two, what a massive Burr strike, and there goes the invoker going down, and there goes the... Oh, there goes the Venomancer, maybe if, yeah, both go down. Venomancer is still going down, but Tidehunter taking down someone with him. A great job for him as the Lich went down in uh, this jungle. This is where he died, actually. And he maybe went down to the Templar Assassin, so attack. great job for him there. Definitely great job for him. Double damage rune helping him out. He's now level 6. Skilled up his side blades to get some extra harassment and extra fast farming in as well, of course. 
And uh, great job for him to get that kill. He needed that kill. And there's the one second stun. There's going to be a sentry ward as well. So invisible won't help. Refraction there. Is it going to be enough? Lance another stun. We'll be able to pop it to slow down the kills night. And there's going to be support. And that's going to be the kills night going down. Ruin TP at the right time. Malefit's going over the Templar Assassin. Black Hole catches two. And Templar Assassin is going to drop here. And it, well, Rubik and Enigma will both be saved. But still, it is a two for two trade here. Actually, am I saying that right? No, it's a one for one trade. Templar Assassin dying as well as the Chaos Knight. Uh, carry trade for carry trade. Sand King, uh, he of course uh, died on the bottom lane, so I believe as well. Hmm, not sure. Sand King? Sand King died to the Thailand. Yeah, the bottom lane. Yeah, that's where he died. So one for one trade here. Great black hole, great TP in from the Rubik, but also great support incoming from the Enigma at the right time. Using the right skills. And uh, we're gonna see uh, what Chaos Knight is gonna do with his invisibility because he does have it. He is level 6 right now. Cold snap up on the Venomance and here comes, here he comes. 3 seconds stun latching but Burr Strike is actually hitting on, on some... Oh, there goes the Venomance and no reality rip making that happen. Sand King gonna be putting the Tornado out of his Sandstorm. Will take an Urn Charge and is taking a lot of damage there. And if Ogre take on the last hit, taking some da tower damage there as well. But will stay alive 2 for 0 here. With uh, an invisibility rune that worked Dyer's out great. Definitely, well, he didn't even use it yet. Wow, shame on me for not noticing that. Uh, but no invisibility rune, he will be able to do uh, invisible on this one. Oh, Invoker. There he goes, taking a lot of damage from the Templar Assassin. In the meantime, Sun lands on Rubik, and there is going to be a Tyrant who does not have a Ravage anymore. And uh, will go down here, most likely. There we go, Disruptive take on the last. He's using his ulti there as well. As he chases down the Chaos Knight, he wants to get that Chaos Knight. He was by himself, a double kill for the Templar Assassin there. Getting the Chaos Knight, as that is 3 for 0. So first, first it was Home getting 2 for 0. And then it was Evo taking down 3 kills in return. So making it count even harder. And that was a situation where probably, where probably uh, Zihom should have backed off earlier. That would have been uh, would have been slightly better for them, but not uh, to uh, to worry. It was still a good fight for both. It. I mean, if the Thailand would have had a rapid, that would have been a totally different fight. Tornado, get him out of stand from Cold Snap, taking a lot of harassment. Ultimate being used as well, and will take him down. Lich taking the kill. Templar Assassin getting stunned here for a long time. Pops his trap. Uh, gonna try to stay uh, invisible, but there is a ward there, and whoa, he's alive. 40 HP. Kinetic trap keeps him visible. Keeps him in uh, in place. Refraction is there. They want to change the kill knight. Three seconds stone still lands on the Templar Assassin. Invoker still trying to take the kill. Ravage making sure that he gets it though. And there's going to be Templar Assassin down. Tornado hits on two, doing a lot of damage. Tied onto getting a double kill for taking down the Rubik. Kinetic trap there as well. Locking Tied onto in place. Uh, he will not go down, but he won't be able to kill the Disruptor at either. So that is going to be an escape for him. But Rubik going down as well as the Templar Assassin. Kills all over the place. It's a big loss for uh, for the, well the Templar Assassin going down. It's just a very big loss. Of course the we Chaos Knight went down as well, so he got something in return. And again, those two those two heroes they should be taking it up against each other. But so far, they've both died quite a lot of times. Chaos Knight he is uh, he's not doing all too well. 30 last hits for 11 minutes in, two kills, three deaths. It's it's not that great. At the same time though, Templar Assassin not doing that great either. Also 30 last hits since she actually died more. Four deaths on her side, as uh, she killed off three heroes in total now, so got at least one more than the Chaos Knight. But uh, still, not all too, uh, not all too, uh, too, too great farm up on them. We're gonna see a gold graph slightly in favor of the Dire team, and um, that is, you can basically count that a tower. It's one tower in favor right now for the Dire, so that's 1.5k gold. As uh, we will see that drop back if uh, Zhome is able to take this tower in return. We do have Sand King standing ready for his epicenter TP in. Very aggressive from the Venomance TPing in right ahead of that. Lands a kill upon the Enigma as well. Did he want to go in on that? Venomance wants to. Where's the rest of his team? Trap pops. Actually doesn't hit anyone. Telekinesis up on the t uh, up on the lich. And there's the kinetic trap hitting on two. And that's gonna be two kills for the disruptor. That is the combination I was telling you about. Tide Hunter going down here as well. Rubik's getting the last hit, but that combination. I mean, I don't think the epicenter actually went in there. It was just a static storm as well as a kinetic trap. And um, well, possibly also a thunder strike. But that combination is just deadly. It just took down Enigma and Lich so fast. Great play by the Disruptor, and I really like seeing him getting played, by the way. I just have to add that, because I this is actually the first game that I cast with the Disruptor in here. 
and he is a nice hero to watch, and he does make for big plays in situations like that. Radiance middle tower Forcing our team fight. Attack. Is they're gonna try to land a gank maybe on the Chaos Knight if they're gonna be able to, but yeah, the Nino is actually uh, knowing what might happen, backing off towards the tier 2 tower, and uh, yeah, the gank from Venomancer is uh, also not gonna happen anymore. And Lich is gonna go back into that middle. I mean, his farm, I mean, he supported he supported the Chaos Knight pretty well, but uh, yeah, that's why his farm is like very much behind him. Still impressed he's level 7, same level as the Chaos Knight, so did have to share that experience, of course, but he could have gone back maybe a, a little bit more to just give that Chaos Knight extra experience, uh, because right now Templar Assassin is level 10, and that is also mainly because she was 2 versus 1 the whole time. And Chaos Knight only level 7, so 3 level difference right now. As we see the experience graph heavily in favor of the Dire, only just now after the last team fight on the bottom lane. Uh, is that the case? And then of course those two, t those two kills just on the middle lane. Uh, but the Ravage is back up, so any team fight that might happen now might be a big amp impact once again on that graph. As kills is what get you, gets you that experience. And if you win a team fight, that experience is gonna go towards your direction super fast. Four heroes of evil on this top lane, and uh, well, there will be four from Z Home as well as we have a TP incoming from the Invoker. The other one not here is the Chaos Knight, and uh, we actually will have five heroes from Evo soon as the uh, Templar Assassin is uh, making her way through to the bottom lane. This is actually an illusion right there, uh, but the real one is standing there. They w they want to have this team fight. They want to have this tier one tower. And will they get it? That's the question. Here comes the real one, showing herself. Five heroes there now. He might have a Chaos Knight TPing in as well. He does have that TP. Uh, tier 1 tower is gonna drop here, no matter what. Trap hitting actually there. Gale landing on the Lich. There we have a refrag- sorry, Kinetic Field. With Invoker trapped inside, Lich ultimate flying through, but is not bouncing off a hero. It's bouncing off creeps, bit wasted there. Tidal trying to move in for a Ravage, but gets slowed, so his plan failed. A lot of harassment done on the Enigma by the melt damage from the Templar Assassin. That's gonna be Invoker. There is the Ravage hitting off four heroes. It's gonna be Gasha Monster that will be the first one to drop on this disruptor. He still managed to pop up as the ultimate. It's gonna be a black hole being casted here, but it gets stolen. There will be another black hole soon. There we go. Catches the Tide Hunter, but not the Chaos Knight. Four seconds on land. And there the Rubik goes down. Templar Assassin is gonna try to get away from this one. Lands a trap on creeps. Not very important, but is gonna be invisible for now. They still know where she is, though. Daphne Blast going through. They will be able to get a kill up on her, or will they not? There's the Venomancer Gale landing. Sounds like not hitting. They want to go for this Invoker. And they will pr might be able to do that as well. And there we go. Invoker taking the kill and Refraction making sure that she doesn't die. So four heroes down on the side of Zeon right now. And only two down on the side of Evo, and it was the Rubik's as well as the Sand King that went down. Sand King who was not able to pop off his ultimate before he went down, unfortunately for him. And of course, sorry, Disruptor went down as the first one as well, so 3 for 4. But a nice deal of Black Hole. I do think that he might have probably been better off waiting, uh, or maybe casting it a bit more to the back, so that also also the Chaos Knight would be in that, uh, as that is why he died. Chaos Knight was just able to interrupt it because he was not in the black hole, able to land a four second stun up on the disruptor and just kill him off. But uh, yeah, that was, uh, it was a massive team fight and definitely in favor of the Dire team of EVO, even though even though the Radiant did not do bad at all. Z Home able to stand their ground. Actually, the Invoker dying at the last probably shouldn't have happened if he wasn't uh, greedy for that kill on the Templar Assassin. Uh, he could have backed out, and then it would be uh, would be even. But we will see the gold dipping slightly towards uh, towards uh, Evo right now. Experience, and uh, also dipping towards Evo. That's the team fight that they won, definitely in favor of them. As uh, that team fight just yeah, it was theirs. It was theirs. Even with the ravage, with the black hole, awesome with all the spells, Lich Ultimate though. I mean, if that Lich Ultimate was different. That would have been a whole different fight, because that Lich Ultimate only bounced around between creeps. It was really not doing anything at all, and it do need that. If that would have been... If if the Ravage... Sorry. If the Chain Frost wouldn't have happened until after the Ravage, that team fight would have looked so different. That's, uh, yeah. That would have been totally, uh, totally Z-Homes, I believe. Sun Strike. Looks like hit on the Sand King while I tried to get Mana Boots. Nice harassment, even though probably not intended. Trap from Templar sets and lands on two. Does she want to go for it? She does have the money for a blink dagger right now. As you can see, mechanism up on the Rubik as well. Helpful in Tifa. I just noticed that I haven't been able to uh, to talk much about items, mostly because there is a lot of kills happening. I mean, we are 17 minutes in, and it's 15 to 21. 
so 36 kills and that's just uh, yeah that's a lot of kills in this uh, in this amount of time as uh, for items uh, we'll, we'll, we'll check out the dire side first as they're trying to uh, to be aggressive here try to push in keep the pressure on like they did in game one right now they have a bit less pushing power but they still want to take it uh, in this game oh in uh, in this uh, game phase I should say in the medium invoker taking care of the venomancer venomancer still uh, landing his gill on two though and might actually be uh, enabling the kill on the Invoker here. Uh, will actually be able to do so. Last hit goes to the Temple of Assassin with her melt damage. It's gonna be Thanking that gets picked off by the tower, though. Tower and, and in combination with the Islands from Enigma. Gosh, landing on the Temple of Assassin. I don't get time to go over items. What am I talking about? Tyhunter who has died five times. Got eight kills from Double. Reality Rift. There's a stun. Two, three seconds only, though. Well, I shouldn't say only. Oh! Rubik's line of stun from the Chaos Knight as well. Actually got four seconds instead of him. Gets to levitate up on there as well. And it's gonna be Templar Assassin that's gonna run away. I'm just having trouble choosing one to follow. Three seconds stop. Black hole! I'm choosing the right one to follow because there goes the Templar Assassin. Rubik is not is able to see that. And there's a black hole! Catches two! Where's the damage to go through it though? Oh, he catches a Lissy to two, but still it's not enough. Rubik will go down. Ravage will be used as well. And I can't believe, well I actually got the disruptor in that as well, disruptor who was uh, on the sidelines actually was uh, right there, but with the ravage, I mean, I was slightly overkill, I mean the lich ultimate would have killed him off, and they could have turned around for the disruptor afterwards, but they did not lose any hero in that fight apart from the invoker who fell at the first uh, start of the of the fight, lich went very low as well, the tide hunter, uh, but they will, were able to kill off, uh, kill off the heroes and uh, 3 4 zero right there. As actually it was 4 for 0, Venomancer was of course the first to die in that encounter where it still was from. So uh, 4 for 1, well if, if I count the Venomancer I should have to count the in Invoker as well, so 4 for 1. Definitely a nice, uh, nice little comeback there from Z-Home, and we're gonna see that mostly back in the experience graph, there we go, look at that. Big leap upwards again towards the zero line. Uh, gold graph is not that, that much same, but that's because of course attack. it's uh, different than the experience. And uh, let's see, I was still checking out what people were building and stuff. We have a Venomancer that's been farming, and he has been farming for that pipe of insight. He's got actually a lot of last hits, I haven't shown this one yet. Actually, yeah, Venomancer got the most last hits in the game right now, with 89 last hits for him. Doing a great job there. Of course, there's uh, there's more that's around 70, 76, 74, as well as on the radiant side. There's a bit less. There's uh, 170, 162. That's the highest two upon the dire up on the radiant side, with three above 70 on the dire side. So that's the massive difference right there. Uh, but still, uh, all here, everybody has some farm. Everybody has some farm. Oh, I can make that into a song. Anyway. It's going to be uh, the Chaos Knight landing a 3 second start up on this Templar Assassin. Is there going to be any follow up though? It doesn't look like it. He knows he has to back up. Disruption there. And there's going to be a stun as well. 3 seconds there. Chaos Knight. First strike going down. Templar Assassin taking the kill. 5 man Dota from Evo following up towards the tier 2 tower in the top lane. Uh, which they are probably looking to push down. Especially now that the Chaos Knight is no longer there. And now that the Chaos Bolt is up on the Rubik. I mean, that must be so annoying, facing a Rubik. I mean, you think you have like, oh nice, I got a 3 second stun, almost the best that I can do, and then bam, Rubik uses it against you, and then bam, 4 seconds stun. Well, of course, that wasn't the case in this time, but uh, yeah, still annoying. Top tower has and there goes the tower, gold actually goes towards the Templar Assassin, who does have his blink dagger right now, he's got 1800 Dyer gold up on him as well. As I am, uh, yeah, I was checking items, I was, uh, I'm not gonna check items on the Radiant side, because I think I went through the Dire side in total already. Yeah, I kind of did. I kind of did. I've got to follow everybody TP to the bottom lane. Tide Hunter! He's gonna try to TP up. Will be in time though. I know. Yeah, he will. He will. Definitely will. He's out. He's safe. Great choice. They did not have a stun, so... He's just able to do that. No sand king to be found or no uh, telekinesis either. So, okay. Lich. Doesn't have that much. I've got a smoke. Um, a, a mechanism up on the Enigma. Will be a nice item for him to have. He has uh, drums from the Invoker. He's not got that much farm. He died five times. He's got one key gold almost. Uh, but he's just uh, he's just not that farmed. Oh, lane pushing in. Yeah, better defend that stuff. Drums, face boots. It's not bad. It's definitely not bad. And, and he can pump out his spells still. And he got the levels as well as level 13. Uh, but he is just uh, he's just uh, not going to be that much of a, of a carry. It's going to be really this Chaos Knight. Chaos Knight who's died five times. There's the smoke that we saw earlier. Uh... Yeah, there's the ward that saw the smoke happening. 
And, uh, yeah, and there's Sentry Ward picking them off as well. And there's the Phantasm, and there is... Whoa, that's gonna be the Chaos Knight trapped in. That's gonna be one bad cookie for them. Gale Ledge is on the illusions only, though. He wants to go for a reality. Would really catch out the Venomancer. Trying to juke, but Venomancer trying to juke more. Will he get out? There's a reality if not hitting. There's just, there's just a room he tries to. He tries to juke. There's the kinetic field, but that's gonna be no reality if Oh, actually, there is. Four seconds on as well. Venomancer going down there. Oh, Phil has his ultimate, though. Silence. Ravage there as well. And Gale's not getting picked up. Sunstrike getting somewhere. It's not hitting anything. Temporal Assassin is going to try to get rid of this tide onto. And she's trying another kinetic field. Holding Invoke replays in the meantime. We have Enigma down as well as the Lich. But no kills at all. If it's Velty being popped, he's right in time. Double kill for the Templar Assassin. He did kill off the tide onto. And uh, this Invoker actually following down. Will there be. A there is no burst strike yet. Ah, uh, he goes the wrong way. Or does he? Oh, big place. Will be time. No. <laughs> Sorry. This is just funny. And that was a team wipe, by the way. Oh, actually, well, Venomizer died, of course, but he bought back to be back on that fight again. But everybody of Zeom died. Massive fight. And they were the ones initiating. Don't forget. They were the ones going for that fight. They were the ones trying to get that team fight, forcing that team fight by chasing down that Venomancer. And then all of a sudden, Evo turns around and boom, managed to take out that fight. Even though the Ravage was used, there was no black hole used. That's probably uh, some uh, some reason for it, as well as no uh, literal thing. And yeah, Chaos Knight going down at the start of the fight, and uh, kind of at the start of the fight, after he killed off the Venomancer, is that was very painful for them to deal with as well. Uh, so yeah, I was checking out Radiant b Bills because I was checking out the Chaos Knight. He doesn't have that much fun because he also died a lot. He's got a Vitality Booster, able to maybe keep him alive a little while longer, but just now we saw that that wasn't really, uh, wasn't really worth it. As well as an Urn, but he is, he's got three charges, I believe, uh, well, it's, it's, it's not as much as he should have at 24 minutes in. That's basically my point. Blink Dagger up a lot tighter though, this could change stuff around. This could change stuff around as uh, Evo's backing off here. There is no towers left up anymore, by the way, up on the Radiant side, apart from the tier 3s, and there is still four towers up on the Dire side. Just something I have to point out, because that is making a massive difference in the gold graph as well. 12k in favor of Evo right now. And this game, I have to say, is looking a lot more even, but uh, Zeehom is just not able to farm as much as uh, Evo right now, and that is what hur what's hurting them. They have got the, the lineup to deal with it, with the massive team fight, with the carry potential, with the phantasm there as well. But they're not able to get the farm. They just uh, get picked off. Losing a team fight. I just have to do, take a sip of water while I follow the Sand King. See if he's gonna make any big plays in the time that I take some uh, water. Oh, actually. Oh no, he will be fine. Venomancer will be fine. Venomancer buys a Vanguard. Just so he doesn't die anymore. Just so he can juke in the forest and then stay alive after he makes the team fight initiated. Wow, that's the water was too big. Heard the deafening blast. Just harassment though. They can't really go in on it and they know it. They have to get their farm elsewhere. So right now we see Enigma farming the top lane. We see Chaos Knight trying to farm the mid lane a bit. Maybe the jungle as well if he's uh, once uh, this lane is pushed out because they can't really push out that far. Uh, one thing that I do have to also point out, I say that a lot. I say that a lot, but yeah, sorry. Um, normally, you see when a team is uh, is at a disadvantage and... Oh, what just got stolen? It's a Chaos Bolt. Nice. Um, but we, when you do see a team at a disadvantage like this, and they lose team fights, and... They are they are just not... They don't have that many towers left. Uh, you usually see them, you know, hiding and not being able to get good control over the map, but they actually have three wards up. They actually have three wards of being able to see a lot of the map and being able to farm relatively safe. And that is just very important. Oh, it might not be safe though. If the Invoker pops his invisibility, should be safe. Kinetic Field still holds him in place. But yeah, that won't do much. Venomancer. Chaos Knight. So it still pops off his ultimate, forces everybody back, but uh, no kills uh, for him. In the meantime, Bottom Lane is getting harassed here by Evo. Cold snap upon the Templar Assassin, but should be safe. Picked up a Desolator on the way. Uh, yeah, for the Dire though, they do have wards as well. They got a ward here, just newly placed. They got a ward here, and up until recently they had a ward up here on the higher ground as well, but that one vanished. But having, 
having good room control, room control, map control on both teams. As in, they both know what's happening. They both know where their opponents are, know where they can and can't go, know where they can maybe get ganks. Look at that damage. It's just, it's just insane. And there we have Dust of Appearance picked up. They need that also. Because every time that Invoker, once again, every time the Invoker went to, goes invisible and, and gets away. And that's just something that, uh, yeah, you, you, can't, you can't really afford if you're, wow, well, overkill. If you're, uh, if you're trying to, to push in, you, you, you kind of need to get those pick-off teamfights, or sorry, pick-off heroes to uh, force that fight. He's true. I just have to also, yeah, I mean, I mean, really, these wards stay up the entire time. And just give for rune control that is that is just so so massive. It is really really nice. Oh, another word being placed. Not just rune control, just just control map control. Oh, hello, disruptor. Hello, Enigma. There's gonna be more. It's already lit going down though. Ultimate and kinetic field hits on two. Actually, yeah, uh, kinetic field is uh is not hitting there. As he blinks away, yes, more choice. The static storm, sorry, Venom is also still being used up. Burst like a no burst like I've said the rabbit goes down, Tide Hunter is already down though. And there it goes to disrupt the killing of the Enigma. Four seconds stun up on the Venom as goes down. Chaos Knight getting picked up by the Sand King though. And it's gonna be Invoker that goes down to the Rubik. Telekinesis being there, and that's already five down in favor of Evo. And once again, Venomancer. His Vanguard did not help all that much, but then again, a 4 second stun, he did aid that so that the rest of his team could stay alive. So that the rest of the team would have time to push into this lane. Which is already pushed out all that well, so he can just start bashing on the tower. Lich is back up already again. Uh, he still has his ultimate if he wants to use it. Black Hole is still up as well, because uh, once again, they just killed him up too fast. Of course, Lich was the first one to go down. Do that Templar at level 19. I mean, look at the experience graph. Massive difference. And we're gonna see it at level 19 Templar Assassin. Highest level upon the Radiant in level 15. So that is something that you don't want to see. And, and level... I mean, the Lich level 10 versus the level 19 Templar Assassin. Yeah, that's kind of painful. And they're gonna be able to take down his barracks and then just back off uh, without any casualties. Apart from the Venomancer that they had earlier. So, uh, yeah. Good job for them. They're gonna counter here some... Yes. And Sand King, like he didn't have enough damage upon his uh, upon his ulti because that definitely made help uh, with that team fight. I mean, he ca he got a tight hunter kill just after the Ravage, so Ravage was still there. But yeah, definitely a, a, d a big help. But he will have a veil of discord soon as well as Templar says and having a BKB, so Ravage does not matter anymore. It's only Black Hole that she can get caught in, or of course uh, if she gets uh, stunned or, or ravaged before she BKBs, which might be a very good possibility as well. Chaos Knight in the meantime, since the last time we saw him, he picked up a Ogre Club. Probably gonna go for that BKB as well. Just to not get silenced, just to not be able to, just to not die. And uh, yeah, gonna try to stay alive. Of course, BKB is a great item on the Chaos Knight. Extra HP, uh, the magic immunity for, uh, you know, for a couple seconds, depending on what level it is. And he is, of course, a strength hero, so getting extra damage from that as well. Is important the invoker managed to get some extra items as well picked up a four staff able to get himself uh, himself away faster or get himself into position for for example an ice ball faster if he wants that and this templar assassin just has great room control picked up a double damage right now still has a bottle as well and uh, might actually get the 32 minute rune as well if she uh, if she wants that she still has the wards up there to get the vision oh hello uh, yeah she backs out smart choice Deafening Blast, and uh, there's the Refraction. I mean, the thing about Refraction is, if your opponent is not able to get it off before, uh, you know, the, before, well, before your Blink Dagger is off cooldown, you can just blink away. That's what I want to say. It sounds so logical when I say that I shouldn't really have pointed it out. It's just, uh, Refraction makes sure that if you don't get damaged by it, your, your, uh, your Blink Dagger will still, uh, not go on cooldown, so you are able to blink away. Well, you know what I mean. You know the point I'm trying to make. There we go. Oh, Chaos Knight! And there's the kinetic field as well. Reality Rift actually uh, didn't... Well, actually, it was Reality Rift on the... Uh, <laughs> it's just so very confusing. What's Reality Rift on the Rubik? He buys back, actually. He knows that if they lose this fight right now, this could be over, and he doesn't want it to be over. We get 5 versus 1, not very safe. 
And what I said earlier about wards, they lost all their wards and have not been able to place any new ones. And there goes Templar Seth and wants to go for lift first. He gets the lift as well. Unstoppable for him right now as he backs off, takes steal. Deafening Blast, Mal uh, sorry, Cold Snap as well, Black Hole being cast as well as the Ravage, and Epicenter going through there as well, Ravage, and there's, oh, it was a Ravage with the Rubik, and it's Black Hole as well, what? What? Triple kill there from the Templar Assassin, and it's gonna be the kill side that's gonna be the last alive, not for long though, he goes down, GG has been called, Dehome takes another loss versus Eho, e Evo, and uh, no Rampage, for Evo, for the for the Templar Assassin, unfortunately for him, and uh, yeah, that was a Ravage, but I believe that Rubik stole, he stole the black hole, but did he also steal the Ravage? I don't think he did, that can't be, that can't be, nah, the cooldown is way too long for that, so uh, he only stole the black hole, because there were two black holes, and uh, yeah, the fight, uh, two kills, two games going to Evo, so they take home two points in this Ghost of League Division 2, if you want to know more about Ghost of League, Go check out ghostofgamers.net slash dota2 and then click on the link that said Ghost League Division 2 or Division 1 if you want to watch uh, more about that or want to know more about that. Uh, my name is Shiver, I am a Ghost of Gamers cast, so you can check more about me, uh, more out about me. Uh, on shivergaming.com for uh, my YouTube, my Facebook, and my Twitter. So go like, subscribe, and follow that as uh, I will let you see this, see this end screen for a little while longer. Uh, well, I'll just tell you that there is going to be another Ghost League game, this time for Division 1, and it's going to be played at 11 CEST time, so that is 2 hours from now, and then still 20 minutes to go, so 2 hours and 20 minutes, and that is actually going to be versus, it's going to be, it, it used to be versus Keda and Hello Moto, but then Hello Moto um, reformed, kind of, three players from Hello Moto, as well as two uh, other players have been picked up by Gamers League, so they're now going under the name of Gamers League, uh, it is their European Gamers League, not the Nordic one, uh, they will be playing, and Keda has this banner as well, but their spot have been taken by Keda Captain Bonsai, uh, making, uh, or joining the team, or that team is now uh, BFB, uh, with Sayuri, Merlini, Demise, and Miguel. So uh, that's their team for uh, for those, as you might recognize some of those names. Uh, we will have that game at 11 CEST time, and I will switch overlays right now, as uh, then you can see the password and stuff, and I will be able to.